We have been traveling the rich fertile lands of Kenya, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful country, talking to farmers wherever we go. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn around their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make the changes. Karibu to Shamba Ship Up Safari. In our quest to shape up more and more shambas all over Kenya, we have transversed many areas and found many, many farms that needed a shape up and some farms that were running well. As we sought to find a farm in the Timau area some kilometers from Nanyuki, we came across one of the most amazingly run farms we have ever seen. This is Farmer Mudonwi's pride and joy. and Mudomi took us around his farm. Having been impressed and with Mudomi's farm on our minds, we moved on with our quest to find a farm that needed shipping. This is Farmer Lucy and Charles, and they quickly show us their farm. Charles and Lucy, we've gone around your farm and we've seen it and we've looked at your potatoes. Now tell me, what problems are you having with your potatoes? The problem we have is the seed. After we plant, mm -hmm. it don't give the, 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 the whatever we, we need. Okay. We pay low, low production. Low production. Mm, the market is not good. Oh. Uh, sometimes oh. Mm, the brokers come in and they buy in a, a, a lower price. Right. Mm -hmm. We find out that Lucy and Charles are having problems with their potato seeds, storage for them after harvesting, and their chicken housing. We are here, we are ready. Let the shepherd begin. I just bet, bet on we that. also discover that Is they belong water? to a community water project that supplies them with water. No, so you're just using mm. one sprinkler for the whole farm? Is it, no, it's... not the whole farm, mm -hmm. a portion. Mm -hmm. A portion, you can't plant the whole chaba with that. So you're saying there's not enough water? It's not enough water. Not... But in during in dry, dry season, season. Mm -hmm. it can disappear sometimes. Ah, the water. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, to help Lucy and Charles with the changing weather patterns, we are constructing a water pan to store water. This has taken five days of diggings, and more is still to be done. We got on to start working on building a new store, the chicken housing, and the water gathering. We called on Edwin, an expert on potatoes, to help. Now, Edwin, yes. what should Lucy start with? Well, L Lucy should start from uh, plant preparation, which she can do with the bulls or by hand, with the djembe. And then she has to break all the clogs and make sure that she has removed all the weeds so that she's now prepared for making the trenches. Mm -hmm. yeah. After she does that, what's next? She should make the, the rows, uh, mostly from east to west side, so that she can uh, capture enough sunlight. Remember, when planting potatoes, the spacing should be three feet from row to row and one foot from seed to seed. Lucy, since I'm seeing you're starting to prepare your land, what kind of seeds are you going to use to plant? I use the seeds that are planted the last season. Uh -huh. yes. Is that a good idea, Adrian? No, it is not a good idea because the more you plant the seeds, that the seed becomes old. Yeah, in Alemans you can say old. So he has to come to Kisima or a, a certified grower to get new seed. Uh -huh. New seed means that it has high vigor and high yields. Uh -huh. Yeah, so she, she should use certified seed. So, we decided to take Lucy and some of her neighbors to Kisima Farm to learn more about growing potatoes. Kisima Farm is a potato multiplication farm that produces certified potato seed. 
It offers extension services to farmers and hosts two farmers training days per year at an agri-information center on the farm. Right now we are at Kisima Farm and actually here is the agri-information center. This is where the farmers in Meru County come for their training for their field days. Right now we are at the plots, the demonstration plots. You can see here we have three varieties of potatoes. Uh, on on your, that side you have Sherekea. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, Tigoni White. Yes. And here there is uh, Asante. And there is also Kenyampia. Those are the four varieties that are available at Kisima Farm. With Kisima seed, a farmer can expect to see his yield increase from 27 bags per acre to 90 bags per acre. And how about general management? Yeah, we call it uh, good agricultural practices, gap mm. practices, and uh, one of them is the, the weeding. You should do weeding after, after one month. And then after around two months, that's when you do the healing. You bring a lot of soil towards the potato so that it gets space for growth. Uh, healing is very important because you are bringing more soil to the crop. Uh, we are more interested with the root part. So once you bring enough soil to the soil, uh, to the crop, it will have space for growth. As, and also the spacing is wide, three, three feet by one feet. This is to give the potato enough space to, to, to grow uh, because it is a high yielder. Okay. The other good practice that they should do was uh, rotation, as I said. Good agricultural practice include weeding, earthing or healing, crop rotation. So Edwin, once a farmer has followed all your instructions and have got a huge bumper harvest, what should the farmer do? Well, uh, if at the time of harvest the prices are not uh, good, the, far, the, the prices are low, we advise the farmer to store his uh, produce in a store. We have developed uh, various storage facilities. We have two designs here that can store potatoes for up to six months and above. We also meet John Kibet, who is a farm manager, to explain what happens in the farm. Okay, so I'm seeing piles and piles of uh, potatoes, I'm seeing mud. Where are we and what exactly is going on? All these piles that you're saying that is sand and what have you, mm -hmm. we've just harvested these potatoes. It's ready now to go for the grading. Now we are at the grading area. As you can see now, we have this uh, machine which has a conveyor belt at the bottom. So, as we had seen those pile of potatoes, we used the tractor, forking, lifting it up, bring it and put it down here so that we can be able to start now the process of selection. The farm manager goes on to say that this is where the fine soil gets dropped or separated from the potatoes. Next, the smallest potatoes are then selected to be as seed and the lumps of soil are also removed. So those, are, those will be the seeds which will be called size one. As you can see, they are smaller, healthier, and they look pretty good. The second stage is the selecting of the medium-sized potatoes, which are also known as size two, and are also used as seed. Then, the bigger sized potatoes are selected for commercial use and as food to be sold in the market. And at the same time, I have my ladies here who, who will be selecting the cut ones because we don't want this one to go and destroy the seed. So this also, we, we can't throw them away. We sell for those people who, who rear pigs and even for rearing livestock. Meanwhile, construction at the farm is going on. The potato store is getting a makeover. The gutters are going up. The water pan is almost complete. The chicken house is looking good. On our way back from Kisima, we decide to take Lucy to see how a well-managed farm looks like. We pay a visit to Mr. Mudomi's farm, who takes Lucy around. Have you planted anything else before here? Yeah, when I installed the kit, I planted potatoes. 
uh, using an input of at least uh, 4,000 Kenyan shillings. Mm -hmm. And then the output was 10 bags of potatoes. I sold them with the Kenyan shillings 2,500. Wow. So you can see uh, uh, I made a profit of uh, more than 21,000. Wow. Yeah. While on the farm, we noticed a little something missing that could do with some of our expert advice. So, we call on Cynthia from Cambry to talk to us about how to keep your chicken healthy and free from disease, and also on the right use of antibiotics to avoid building up resistance. Once you have chicken and you maintain proper hygiene... And right away, the expert points out that hygiene is very important. You have these clothes you, from the cows. You don't know what germs you're bringing into the chicken. So you have like a coat specifically for the chicken, chicken. side. Okay. And the feeding troughs, water dispensers, make sure they're clean. You change them every single day. We, as we realize you do not have a foot, foot bath for disinfecting your feet before you get to the area of the chicken. So in order to, to maintain, have healthy chicken, you're supposed to ensure that you have the foot dips, as I told you, to minimize spread of moving from this direction with germs to the chicken, you know, and then proper hygiene, ventilation, and as you've said, keep changing, keep cleaning the rooms before you introduce new stock. Cynthia has more advice on the chickens. We have many complaints about, from farmers about uh, respiratory illnesses like chicken. You've had them sneeze or cough sometimes. What do you do? Do you go buy the medicine yourself and treat the chicken or what happens? I go buy and come and treat. You see, now that's where the problem comes in. Because now you do not have an exact overview of the disease that the, the chicken is suffering from. You come, you do not have the exact dosage of the drug that you're not supposed to treat the chicken with. Yeah. So this brings a problem because now the, the chicken is exposed to the drug f over a long period of time. And probably since the doses are not correct, it acquires resistance. The types of antibiotics that are used to treat animals are the same as those used to treat humans. So, if resistance to an antibiotic develops in an animal, the resistance will also be transferred to humans if they eat that animal or the bird with the resistance. This means if this person falls ill, then the antibiotic will not be able to cure this person. When you realize your chicken is suffering from maybe coughing, diarrhea, you quarantine it. You remove it from the rest okay. of the chicken, keep it aside, okay. treat it. Once it's gone away, then you can take it back to the stock. The stock. Just to reduce transfer from this one chicken that is to sick another. to the other stock. Oh, yeah. And then another thing is make sure before you treat your chicken, in case of any complaints, in case of sneezing, coughing, make sure you get advice from a veterinary. I'm sure where you buy your medicine, there's a vet who gives you the medicine to the chicken. Make sure the disease is established. So, so you're advising the farmers not to go to an agro vet and buy the medicine themselves? I'm advising you as a farmer, when you realize your chicken is sick, do not go and just think like, so and so say they treated this chicken with this medicine, it worked, so I'll go buy that. No. Go to a veterinary doctor and explain what your chicken is suffering from, and he'll know what to do. Farmer Mudomi, yes. you've heard from the expert, yeah. and I hope you're going to follow that advice. Yeah. Do not go to the agro vet, buy medicine and come treat your chickens, yeah. because you're going to be contaminating even yourself. Even myself. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So, if you have a food dip in front of the building, clean and efficient water dispensers, and feed containers and proper ventilation, your chickens will be much healthier and you will not be able to use antibiotics except on rare occasions when the vet says so. This means your cost will remain low and you will have healthy chickens and a healthy family that will not be resistant to antibiotics. Naomi, we are learning so much about potatoes. And have been thoroughly impressed by Modomi and Kisima Fan. And that's just the half of it. Let's see what happens after the break. We are in Timau learning about potatoes. Naomi, I think we have learned so much about potatoes that we can now go and plant. Really? Absolutely. So tell me, what is the spacing between seed to seed and from row to row? 
you know what? I think we better go and talk to the experts. <laughs> okay. I've come with the seed here from Kisima, mm -hmm. and we also have fertilizer. When you are dealing with certified seed, you should ensure that you have this label. This label is available in every certified bag of potato that you buy. So ensure that you have it in your, in your sack. It has all the information and it comes from Kefis. The certificate contains information of the species, the variety, the category, and where it should be grown. You shall compare. This is a seed for Kisima, that is certified seed and we have the local seed that she uses. First of all, uh, we shall start with the Kisima seed. You see it, it has sprouted. Well, the, seed, the local seed hasn't sprouted yet. And then she has to look at the number of eyes that uh, the, the sprouts have come from. So you can see there are more eyes that have sprouted in the, in the certified seed compared to the local seed. And also I, 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 can, I, didn't, I can see that there is some diseases with the local seed. Uh, local seed is not free from diseases. Where the, the certified seed is completely free from diseases. Armed with the new knowledge on potatoes, Lucy was ready to go and get planting on her new potato plot. When planting potatoes, these are the steps. Prepare the ground. Break the soil lumps. Make furrows three feet apart and six inches deep. Put manure. Sprinkle fertilizer along the furrows at the rate of 20 kilograms per acre. Cover lightly with soil. Place potatoes one foot apart with the sprouts facing up. cover with soil. After planting and harvesting, the next most important thing is where to sell. What prices would you get and how would you do this? Edwin is taking me to such a place. This is a meeting between the farmers and the processors and they're trying to agree on the best price for their potatoes. Let's get in and hear. IFDC is working with Sigenta to link cluster group farmers to markets and processors to discuss and find the best prices for their potato crop. This process ensures that farmers get a good price and reap the benefits of their hard work. We meet Joseph Karanja, who is the director of Fresh and Crisp, a potato processing company. He explains what farmers need to do to get good prices for their potatoes. And so I think this is a very wonderful opportunity where we can meet. Me, I'm the market and you are the farmers. And therefore, we can be able to meet and look at, uh, at how can we work profitably together so that at the end of the day, each one of us will go home smiling. And so, uh, the things that affect the price of uh, potato is what I want to go through. And I want to start with number one, the issue of grading. One of the things I have discovered as a processor and a person who uses potato uh, to make different potato products is that the farmer never grades his products. You normally put your, your potatoes in a bag. Uh, normally you would put the small ones uh, at the bottom of the bag. Then you will put the medium sized potatoes in the middle. Then at the top now you will put the big ones. And so when you take to the market, you want the customer to believe that what he is seeing on top of the potato bag is what is there underneath. But most of the time we know it is not true. And therefore I suggest what the farmer can do is to grade his potatoes from the farm so that you can put the big potatoes here, then you put the medium potatoes here, and you put the small potatoes here. And then you will be able to target different markets. Number two, packing. Uh, there is a tradition in Kenya uh, whereby we found our grandmothers and our, and our grand grandmothers putting potato in gunny bags. So what happens with that kind of packaging? You have automatically closed your market only to the brokers who can buy very big and huge 
uh, quantities of potatoes. That means if a, a, if a family wants to buy potatoes, they can never buy from the farmer because they don't need the whole big bag. So I suggest that we can change our packaging, that we can put potatoes and maybe we put them in 50 kgs. Then the issue of pricing now comes whereby if you have graded and if you have packed well, then you can be able to say my premium potatoes will cost 30 shillings a kilo. That is an example. So pricing is affected by the grading and the packaging that you have always done. So number four is seed. And Mr. Karanja went on to explain that in order for the farmers to get the best prices, they also need to use certified seeds and have proper storage. So that once you harvest, you store your product, your potato products very well, so that you can release them little by little, so that you maintain the same kind of demand that is there, and you make that the prices will remain at a, at a certain level. You have the power to control the price in the market as the farmers. So, Nishiriki Kumina Nane, Amani Shingi Shirin Natan. The debate is quite heated down there. You know, the farmers want a certain price, and the customer want another price. They're still haggling over it. It's getting very heated. It's like a presidential debate in there, but quite interesting. Stay tuned. With the very best potato seeds planted, we have to ensure that Lucy gets a good harvest, even in the absence of rain. So we got our friends from Kickstart to help out. So how does this Money Maker Max work? Okay, Money Maker Max is a manual pump. Mm -hmm. It has a pedal, these are the pedals, where you step on, and this is an inlet, where you use the black pipe, yeah. which is a suction pipe, mm -hmm. and this is a horse pipe, you use it as an outlet. Yes. And this is the where you insert the outlet pipe. It mm -hmm. also has a sieve. This one has an unreturned valve. So after tying it on the suction pipe, you insert it in the river or the dam. Mm -hmm. And it will help you to retain the water on the cylinders. Mm -hmm. So when you're using it uh, now in your potatoes, you'll pump the water up it can pump the water seven meters high mm -hmm. to the tank. Mm -hmm. Then from there through the gravity, through gravity it will flow to the drip lines. Yes. Kickstart has started an installment pay service known as Tone Quatone when paying for the pump. For more information, visit your local dealer. When installing a money maker pump, you need stored water. Our water pan is now getting final touches. Next, an overhead tank is put up, which is key for the money maker pump. Now, the connections begin to make the irrigation a reality. When installing the money maker pump, put the sieve on one end of the high density suction pipe. Connect the other end to the inlet on the pump. Connect the outlet pipe on the outlet on the pump. Fill the cylinders with water. This is called priming and helps remove air. Do not use oil or grease. Water is enough to lubricate the system. Finally, pedal and enjoy the benefits of cost-effective irrigation. With the irrigation system feeding the new crop of potatoes and the shape up going on in the rest of the farm, it was time to take care of Lucy's heart of the home, the kitchen. So Lucy, we've spoken about your jiko. You've told us how it's always very smoky. It affects your eyes. Yeah, and, and it's very difficult to find firewood, right? Yes. So now this is Alpha here and she's got a solution for all that. So this unique jiko from Easy Life the first thing it's going to do for you is to reduce your firewood problems. This Jiko uses very little firewood, so you're going to save a lot of firewood and a lot of money that. This Jiko, it also cooks very fast, 
So the amount of time that you're using to cook is going to be reduced. So this Jiko, this, it reduces the amount of smoke significantly, a lot. And that means that when you cook, it's going to be so easy for you to breathe. You won't have teary eyes. You won't be coughing and sneezing. So you have a really nice time when you're cooking your food. Thank okay. you. Okay, yeah. But one thing I want to know, how much firewood are you using every week? It's for 500 shillings. For 500 shillings in one week? And that's 2,000 a month. And 24,000 shillings in a year. Mm -hmm. So let's go through the cost again. Lucy uses 500 shillings on firewood in a week, which is 2,000 in a month and 24,000 in a year. So, by using the new Easy Life Chico, Lucy has managed to save on her firewood. She will cut her firewood cost by half, therefore saving 12,000 shillings. Easy Life currently offers three modern firewood Jiko products. The Jikos have a unique fire chamber made of special ceramic or high quality metal. The Jikos from Easy Life last up to five years and come with a one year warranty. Easy Life stoves are clean, easy to use, save you time when you're cooking, and it uses 50% less firewood, saving you money. Edwin, these may not be the exact uh, the story we saw at Kisima, yes. but I do believe it's a good start from our farmers here. Yeah, this is very good. Mm -hmm. It's uh, above average. Yes. Because I can see the crates have been raised up, mm -hmm. and then the crates are big enough. Yeah. So she is able now to store her seed very well. With the water gathering done, Lucy will have enough water from the rain to use in her smoke-free kitchen. Use certified seeds. Properly store your potatoes to sell when the prices are high. Coming together in a cluster group will help you negotiate for better prices and put your resources together to build a proper storage. We came, we saw. And we were impressed. And Lucy is on her way to becoming a great potato farmer. And with Kisima and Mudomi at hand to help. And Shamba Shape Up experts a phone call away. Our work here is done. And we'll see you again soon, right here on Shamba Shape Up. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up.